Ezekiel reports his encounter with a time traveller, being a human male, as a man came and stood by me. This man told him to describe the Etruscan temple and write it all down. The temple pictures were in a circular book that was held in the hand of the time traveller. That circular book was written within and read from the backside. That book was the non-religious historical compact disc called Ancient Civilizations of the Mediterranean. To measure the temple pictures, the time traveller told Ezekiel to use the spear of the watchman as a measuring reed and told him how to do so. An historical cubit is the length of an arm below the hand. However, the time traveller specifically names this length on the screen as six cubits. Six cubits by the cubit thus defines a scale of unit for the screen based on one cubit, just like the scaled legend on a map. The length of the spear in the soldier's hand has been called a measuring reed, which is five times the length of the soldier's arm, which makes this reed 30 cubits in length. Using this ruler, Ezekiel was told to measure the temple pictures. Let's run the ancient CD-ROM and compare its pictures with Ezekiel's descriptions. This is the voyage screen. Ezekiel calls the Windrose compass a whirlwind and describes its red compass points as a fire enfolding itself. He calls the cursor a brightness and when it is placed in the middle of the Windrose, the colour of the words start voyage are noted as being bronze in colour. Clicking the middle of the Windrose takes us to the map page where the animal icons are called living creatures. When the cursor is placed over the calf icon, Along under its feet is the name of that civilization, appearing in letters cutted like burnt brass. Now calling the cursor wings, Ezekiel mentions that the hand of the time traveller operates them and explains that the two parts of the animated cursor were joined together one to another and that unlike a bird, they did not turn but only faced straight forward. He then names the four icons as the face of a man, a lion, facing to the right, an ox, facing to the left, and something like a soaring eagle. Again calling the sailboat cursor wings, Ezekiel explains that it is a two-part animation. They are both joined together, the sail down then stretches up, and they only face one way forward. Now calling the bright white sailboat cursor the spirit, and the result of clicking upon an animal icon as they went, Ezekiel explains that the animal's faces do not turn when we are taken to the next screen. At the top, Ezekiel saw the line again, still facing to the right, then reports that the top curved line is touching the land, and that this wheel and its internal workings were blue in colour. He noted that the four central dotted rings were all the same, and they looked like a wheel within the middle of a wheel, and that when moving on to the next screen, these wheels did not turn. When the cursor is passed over the map, a square red border called rings appears, and within it, the red town dots look like eyes. Calling the cursor the spirit, Ezekiel explains that when we go to the next screen, the spirit goes too, and that upon clicking the cursor, the wheels were lifted up and also reappeared, just like the sailboat spirit did on the other screen to the animal icons. In the header area, above the wheels to the right, Looking like a throne, transparent blue in colour, was the appearance of a man. This soldier reminded Ezekiel of one he saw earlier, so he went back and described him. Above his loins is the colour bronze, and below his loins is a fiery red colour. Originally calling the sailboat curse of the brightness, he notes that it passes round about the soldier. This brings forth a cloudy white highlight box which he describes as like a misty cloud in the day of rain. This new brightness around about, the soldier Ezekiel calls the glory of the Lord. Not looking at the screen, he doesn't see the time traveller move on to the military life presentation, but does report hearing the narrator's voice. For individuals of the highest social rank Back to the Etruscan main page. Ezekiel again calls the sailboat cursor the spirit and describes the time traveller's hand operating it as the hand of the Lord, and reports that this action lifted him up and took him away to the next screen, at which point the time traveller states, I have brought forth this watchman. 
using the words, the hand of the Lord was there upon me, it was reporting that the time traveller was operating the sailboat cursor and placed it over the plane behind the watchman. Doing this evokes the same cloudy white highlight box which Ezekiel earlier called the glory of the Lord. The time traveller now calls the cloudy white highlight box a tile, gives control to Ezekiel and tells him to pass it over the city until he reaches the door of the inner gate where another cloudy white highlight box appears similar to the one he saw over the plain behind the watchman, which is now called by Ezekiel the glory of the God of Israel. He is told to click the mouse with the words, lift up thy eyes now, and confirms this with the words, so I lifted up mine eyes. Then reports seeing above the gate, the headings he calls an altar in the entrance. He is told to click again, which brings him to the door of the temple courtyard, and then sees a hole in the wall. These temple pictures are the ones Ezekiel was told to measure, starting back from the Etruscan main page. Ezekiel reports that the time traveller's hand took him and from a religious perspective mistakenly believes he was taken back to Israel where he saw this frame of a city to the south upon a very high mountain where he again saw the soldier wearing a brass coloured uniform standing in the watch gate. It is at this point of Ezekiel's story that he introduces the means by which to measure the temple pictures which was explained earlier. To check the measurements yourself Use a piece of paper, mark off the six cubits, then the length of the reed, and this becomes your ruler. Putting it against the screen, using the length of the spear being a reed, Ezekiel reports the measuring the wall with the height of one reed, and around the gatehouse with the breadth on both sides being one reed each. From the top of the stairs to the side of the screen, one reed. The threshold of the gate, one reed. The footpath, one reed long. And on the inside, one reed. Its width, five cubits. Just a bit less than the six we've got measured. And between the gate and the porch post within, one reed. As smaller measurements may be hard to see, let's enlarge the image to make it clearer. At our workshop, you would be giving a piece of paper and use your own ruler directly on the screen at the original resolution. Let's set the scale, then view a montage of Ezekiel's measurements. The width of the gate, eight cubits. The width of the gate posts, two cubits. The width of the gate, 10 cubits. The length of the gate, 13 cubits. The gate fence from the top post to top post, 25 cubits. 60 cubits from the side of the screen to the pavement around by the gate. From the face of the gate to the wall of the porch, 50 cubits. Back to running the CD-ROM. Ezekiel keeps measuring and recording various aspects from this screen. Then later in the chapter he reports being taken to a new screen with the words, he brought me to the porch of the temple which as normal size is an enlarged picture of the temple courtyard. Going back to a still image and enlarging it as we did before for clarity and using the same rulers, Ezekiel measured the lower gate. Five cubits on one side, five on the other. Three cubits on one side, three on the other. The porch, 20 cubits. The height, 11 cubits on one side and on the other. The gate posts, Six cubits broad on one side, six cubit broad on the other. The breadth of the door, ten cubits. Each side of the door, five cubits on one side and five cubits on the other. The length, forty cubits. And the breadth, twenty cubits. Back to the running CD-ROM. Before Ezekiel made the last set of measurements, he announced where the time traveller was taking him next being behind the temple heading. Ezekiel announces arriving at the temple as, then he went inward. He measures this temple, then moves on to the wall of the temple picture, which he measures. After he measured the wall of the temple, going back to the first picture, he reports this enlarging, then continues measuring. Let's check those measurements now. 
So going back to the religious life menu page where we were before, let's go to a still image. We'll go to the temple page, enlarge it as we did before for clarity, and use the same rulers. As Eagle reports, the columns were two cubits thick, and the one by the door six cubits high, with the width of their opening being seven cubits. And from the next picture, also enlarged for clarity, he measured the length of the most holy as 20 cubits and the breadth 20 cubits. Its wall was 6 cubits and the four round dots each were 4 cubits on every side. Going back to the original size screen and back to the first temple and clicking on it, Ezekiel reports this larger picture as an enlarging. This is its original size on screen, but as before, let's enlarge it for clarity and use the same scale rulers. Ezekiel adds the length of a reed plus six cubits, which totals 36 cubits, and measures the height of the wall, a reed and six cubits. The thickness of the wall as five cubits, between the round posts, a width of 20 cubits, the width of the round posts, five cubits, the length of the building, 70 cubits. The wall was five cubits thick. And the length of the foundation was 90 cubits. The book of Ezekiel also contains descriptions from other parts of the ancient CD-ROM. Our resource book contains further information 